Welcome to another episode of Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is I.K. Grande, and if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped to get off. Uh, and so has the gentleman that is my guest this week, uh, international adult entertainer, Romeo Davis, content creator. So much more than that, though. You're, you're, you do a lot of stuff. I do tons. Yeah. I do it all. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm, I'm very well. I'm actually very excited because we've been working on this for, I'd say, close to a year. Even before the pandemic, you had... Um, you were on Twitter, and uh, did I message you? I think I messaged you, and I asked if... Uh, oh, this has been going on forever. Yeah, 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 yeah. So here you are. Yes, finally. Uh, thank you again for, you. for doing this. Uh, a lot of models kind of shy away from... Not a lot, but a good amount of them shy away from it because they don't want to demystify. They don't want to talk about anything. They just want to get their shit done. They want right. to work and then just, you know go on their very like their merry lives and stuff like that get that cash yeah exactly yeah. Wow. but i always i find it very interesting because i've worked with so many porn models and you are more than a big dick just like we mentioned before what are you I'm more than a big dick got big balls too there you go <laughs> so tell me a little bit about um first and foremost because of the fact that we are in a pandemic mm -hmm. or at nearing the end of a pandemic what um what was your quarantine like it was actually pretty crazy at first, uh, like, you know, going out and all that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I actually was able to get to Europe, uh, getting tested constantly because the laws had changed in Europe. So then I just kind of was able to travel around a bit in. Um, I did Berlin. Mm -hmm. I did Spain because the laws were so different there. So I got lucky to be able to get over there. And then when the laws started to change here in the U.S., I was able to travel in. Now I'm vaccinated, everything, so everything's getting a bit easier. Oh, so you're fully vaxxed. You've gotten both shots. Yeah. You're good. Okay. So How I, was that? It was fine. I yeah. mean, I got a bit sick at first, but, I mean, I was lucky compared to a lot of people. I think yeah. A lot of people got sick from it. So. I also, I hear that the sicker you get, the better it is, like the immune system or something like that. Um, it means that your immune system is really, really fighting it, and once you get better, it's yeah. like crazy. It, it would make sense. I mean, I've, al I've also already gotten it. At the, f okay. at the first of it, when it first started coming out, I got COVID, so that okay. was hell. Was what, cool. Well, I was going to say, what was that like? That was fucking hell. Yeah? Especially since no one knew really what it was. Um, so I was um, I was one of probably the first ones to get it, I think. Uh, I went to go see my doctor. He was like, no clue what it was. I was really? Like, yeah, I was like, could it be COVID or something? And he was just like no that'll never make it over here kind of like yeah. cut to like three months later everything being yeah. shut down yeah. yeah it was pretty crazy when you think about it i was like wow when you say over here you mean uh montreal yeah in canada okay so you're home. from you're from montreal i'm from good old canada yeah what was it like growing up in montreal um i'm actually not from montreal oh, okay. i'm actually from a small town outside um, it was pretty good. I mean, um, my parents were super accepting. They were super open-minded compared to, I feel like a lot of people, um, growing up gay. I mean, mm -hmm. I did my coming out pretty early, so my parents were accepting of all that compared to a lot of people. I think I'm pretty lucky. Okay. Family was accepting, but what about, uh, like going to school and people in the area in it's, it's like a village, right? Cause Montreal, aside from Quebec, Montreal is the only other Big like city, city yeah. that kind of feels like you're in Europe when totally, you're there. Totally, like yeah. especially like old Montreal stuff. Yeah, like that, yeah, yeah. architecture. Yeah, everything. It feels really old, French. It's good. Yeah. So what about like uh, growing up? Like your your peers and your classmates and stuff. Were they accepting as well? Yeah, they were pretty accepting. Cool. Um, of course, I was always the one hanging out with the girls and stuff like that. I was kind of more flamboyant. I was fun to be around. I was <laughs> always like the party guy. So. I think that kind of helped me through high school, whereas I think a lot of the, the the gay ones that were a bit shyer, they usually get more picked on. I was mm -hmm. kind of like more outspoken and there for a good time. So it's like, whether you didn't like I was gay, you still liked me because I was fun kind of thing. So okay. I got lucky on that. Yeah. We'll put it that way. You seem like a fun guy. I'm all right. This I, is mean, a <laughs> I mean, I'm fun in sex clubs, so <laughs> it, I'm just not very complicated to go along with. Well, that's always just good. Just I mean... And, uh the industry that we're in uh it, people can tend to get complicated wouldn't you say like it there's there's definitely you know you have personalities and you know we're involving sex we're involving money we're involving a lot of different things and competition yeah. yeah do you do you i consider you on twitter and all that stuff when i see you i'm like okay so he's one of those big dick tops that like everybody fucking loves like you get so oh, much thanks. attention I like yeah that. yeah no I, I, I like that too um but I'm curious, like, there's you, there's 
uh, Esteban, there's Max Connor, there's a whole bunch of guys out there mm -hmm. that, what's that camaraderie like? Do you guys have like a big dick club that you guys go to and just hang out or? I wish. <laughs> I just fucking suck all their dicks. Yeah. It would be so much fun. But no, it's, it's, it's not really, I don't really feel like it's like that. Um, I feel like I'm super work oriented. Um, I'm more kind of focused on bottoms, to be honest. Okay. So okay, cool. getting good contacts with bottoms, working with bottoms, stuff like that. Whereas it's like tops, it's like we're just like not really in the same kind of. Well, yeah, because you're both kind of probably looking for the same thing. You're looking we're for. We're both kind of looking for the same thing. And yeah. I don't really, I, a lot of them are amazing guys, but it's, I don't really have interest in it because. Yeah. You know, they just. What are you going to do? Just stand there and. I, I could each suck them, yeah. but it's like when they could fuck someone else, they'd rather yeah. pick fucking the other guy, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm not that great at bottoming. Have you bottomed? Yes. And so you, do you, are you like a relationship bottom or do you do it? Have you done it on screen? I'm not. Yeah. Oh, wait, I, I have seen you on yeah, screen. Yeah, my okay. first scene actually was bottoming really? for Bosin. Really? Yeah. How was that? It was good. Yeah? Yeah, it was okay. fun. He's a super nice guy, super easygoing, laid back guy um huge fucking cock yeah I was so gonna, big so what's wh your uh your preparation for for taking a dick right uh <laughs> what's that like i'm always curious I'm i don't know yeah. i don't know what my preparation is so there's is. so there's no, I no hope, for the, hope for the best <laughs> <laughs> fucking cross my fingers no i uh, you know i have my douching regimen yeah. that i do um a lot of people it's like with diet and all that i can't fuck with that yeah I like there i know oh, there's too many bottoms out there that are like starving because they're gonna take like four or five hours um b before they even started their cleanse or anything right or whatever and then it's crazy yeah they just they literally are the first people to get their checks and just run out and get something to eat go to burger king <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. like the oh, no. fastest food you could get <laughs> do you know what my reflection is every time i bought them which isn't very often what? i'm in the fucking shower and i'm like god these bottoms must love it <laughs> They must love it so much because <laughs> I can't fucking do this anymore. Yeah. It's like, it's it's a lot of work. It I, is. And I just, I'm impressed with them. Yeah. The dedication to it, fucking amazing. I just have to take a three minute shower before and I'm good to go. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, yeah. And they're like. Good for you. Yeah. And they're just like <laughs> plunging their holes and then riding dildos. It's like the dedication. Fucking amazing. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a relationship bottom because you kind of have to be when you're in a relationship. Uh you got to flip the switch. Once yeah, in a while. you got you because you know you, it's kind of self. It's very selfish to just not think of your partner, right? Um, and it's it's not easy. It's not. It's never been easy for me. I think, uh, and I'm one of those people that do. If I kind of have to know what's going to happen before, right? So that way I can be like, okay, well, I can't have that. I can't eat this. I can't. You know, like pretty much just like these models not have any food for the rest of the day and then oatmeal for the week before yeah, yeah. You know, he comes home Crazy. from work and i'm like we're doing it now you know like at six o'clock so that way we can I'm go douche, let's <laughs> go like yeah <laughs> yeah no yeah it's too much uh, you are more what i'm curious more about too is i have a kind of a segment that i call big dick problems okay right so ask somebody what do you measure uh eight and a half okay but i'm really thick yeah you, that's that's the issue here so what would you say, uh, oh, let, let's go back further a little bit, um, going through puberty. Yeah. Did you know that you were um, very well endowed early on? I wasn't sure. I didn't yeah. know really, to be honest, because you don't really have size reference, mm -hmm. right? Um, where there, it, it was an issue was the first time I had sex, actually. Okay. And was that? Uh, Condoms. Girl or guy? Uh, it was with a guy. Okay. So you're, uh, so you came out and you already had a, um, like a, Guy as a partner first and foremost. Right. Okay. Uh, so condoms. Condoms. Yeah. Condoms are an issue. Okay. Still to this day. You didn't know. It'll oh, be an issue. Even with magnums? Yeah. Really? They're really Jesus tight. Christ. And it just fucking hurts. Really? Yeah. Okay. So I actually went on this website a few years back and I think they're called My Size. Okay. It's like a European company and you can measure your dick and they'll send you the exact size that you need. Wow. Yeah. I went with that. That was a lot better, but they're like a lot bigger than Magnums. They huh. are. Jesus. Or else okay. it's, it's just fucking tight. So I'm when prep came out and people were starting to use it, I was like, this is a fucking blessing. Yeah. Because it's like, otherwise it was just uncomfortable. It's so, like putting an elastic around your dick. Yeah. Right? It's not fun. Okay. So you had issues with condoms mm -hmm. uh, as an adult or growing up and stuff. What else has become 
kind of one of those things where you're like, oh, fuck. Like, you know, I spoke to Antonio Biagi about this one point, and his biggest thing is is going to the bathroom, and it just, like, kind of hangs in the water while you're sitting on the toilet. So, That's you know, happen. little things, but, you right. know, well, big things, but you know what I mean. Right. What, what would you say is the biggest pain in the ass that people who don't have big dicks would be like, hey, uh, I'm taking this for granted? Um, I think sometimes it sounds crazy, but, like, sometimes some really, like, cock hungry bottoms or like i just want you to just fuck the shit out of me and then you take it out and they're like oh like they kind of get scared of it yeah, yeah, yeah and then you have to ease it in and then you can't go as hard as you'd want or as hard as or as hard as they want you mm-hmm. know because sometimes they're like just fuck me harder kind of so i think that's an issue too actually yeah. because you can't i can't go as hard as i want sometimes because people are like jesus christ Okay, so, so much bigger than I thought. So their eyes are bigger than their, <laughs> their appetite, or right? Their stomach. It's yeah. like going to <laughs> IHOP and getting like the fucking yeah. platter with the pancakes on okay. it, and you're just like, I'm not even hungry anymore. Kind of. Have you had? Uh, is that more of a personal life thing, or is that also on set? When it uh, comes to uh, bottoms, I kind of feel like on set people kind of let themselves go a bit more in mm-hmm. personal life. You know, on set, you'll get the hand kind of, like, holding your hips so that you don't go in all the way and stuff like that. In personal life, I think it happens more often, actually. Really? Yeah. Okay. Do you find uh, that you like your bottoms to be able to take it, like, fully? Like, you just able to go to town or? Yeah, I like that. But I also want the bottom to have fun. You know, I want them to have good time. So it's, like, it's kind of like an exchange there. It's, like, um, people think, people always call me like oh you're so much nicer in person you know you're so sweet and i'm like well i'm not a fucking dick (laughs) like i don't want to like wreck your whole for real you know what i mean of course it's like if you give me the chance i'll do it yeah because that's fun but it's like you know i don't want to hurt someone in the ass yeah no yeah that does suck right um so i can see how you and drew are uh compatible in that sense when it comes to having sex Drew is just a bit of spit, and you're good to yeah. go. <laughs> oh, he, yeah, you know, he showed it to me today. He's but so he also funny. mentioned that you guys have kind of done a world tour, right? Um, right. Going around and just you topping everybody, him bottoming for everybody, or it's just been a circus. Yeah. How did yeah. how did that friendship come about? Uh, I met Drew a few years back. We were filming for Rafa Club in Florida. Mm-hmm. And then at one point he was flown into Montreal to do some shoots, I think for men.com or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then we met back up and I just thought he had a great energy. He's a super fun loving guy. We have the same kind of like banter. We insult each other. We love taking each other down. It's just fun. It's all in good nature. That's cool. That's nice. And also to be able to have uh, someone to travel with. Yeah. Do you find, do you find, uh, because you've worked with a lot of studios mm-hmm. uh, in Europe, here, and mm-hmm. other countries and stuff. Uh, do you find it kind of lonely when you're in hotel rooms and stuff? Like when you're, when you're constantly traveling? Uh, not really. No? No, I kind of don't mind being alone. I'm okay. kind of a more quiet person in real life. Um I do my own stuff. I get my little things done. Mm -hmm. Um, And I see a lot of people anyways. Yeah. Sometimes there's like seven, eight people there, the models. Uh, So at the end of the day, I'm kind of happy to get home. And just just be like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I only ask because uh, I think towards the end of even the pandemic or towards the beginning of the pandemic, um, at that point, I've been doing or working in porn since Mm -hmm. that would have been what, 11, 12 years at that point constantly being in hotel rooms and stuff right <clears throat> uh it does get lonely and i only realized that um after a while because i used to travel with champ mm-hmm. uh champ champ when i was at rafa club champ would follow me around because he was starting his own company mm-hmm. and uh he would just always be there you know it was and it's kind of cool so yeah. that's why i say it's really cool to be able to travel doing the kind of work that you're doing with uh another model and have a really really cool like camaraderie yeah and i i genuinely feel um you know there's a lot of people in this industry we've already talked about like competitive Mm -hmm. and i feel like there is none of that with me and him and when he gets a gig i'm genuinely happy for him vice versa he's happy for me like we're totally like you know like helping each other out cool um, so I think that's really good. Yeah. I think that's special because you don't get that with everyone, especially yeah. not in this industry. 
Yeah, it's a right. lot of like throat slashing and like, it's like backhanded compliments and shit. <laughs> right, there's a lot of that. So yeah, I'm I'm happy to have someone like that in my life. So let's talk about um, porn and yeah. When uh, when did you know you were you were destined to be an adult entertainer? Um, I've always had it in the back of my mind. Yeah, I've just always been super trashy and super nasty. So it's just like oh. And then I was just like, I came at this point in my life where I was just like, well, do I want to keep doing the nine to five job or do I want to do, you know, if I want to branch out and try. So then that's when I started doing like the fan pages and stuff. Um, so you, relatively 2017 uh, ish we're looking at or what was what's the time frame here? 2018. 2018. OK. Yeah. So I did fan pages for about a year and a half. And uh, that's when I got actually my first studio gig, which I didn't even apply for. So I'm really fucking lucky. That's always cool. Right? Yeah, when someone just wrote to me on Instagram is like, hey, do you want to do like that bromo scene with Bosin? And okay. I was like, what? Yeah. Me? Okay. <laughs> kind of thing. So That's always fun. Yeah, it was yeah. pretty fucking cool. That's actually, at this point, um, when it comes to contacting models, I just go on Twitter. I don't, I don't, I understand the idea of having an agent. I just don't think it's necessary anymore. No. Uh, because you can be your own agent, kind of like you can be your own production studio and you can be your own shooter and editor it's, and all that stuff. It's it's all geared towards now you can just do it yourself. Yeah, yeah I think and inevitably mm. studios will become, I don't know, collaborators with models. Oh, yeah. It's going to... It's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. I give it like two, three more years before it really just drastically mm. changes into what it's going to become. I get... Um, Probably one of the most like the most um, asked question that people ask me all the fucking time is, I want to start doing porn. Mm -hmm. How do I get into the industry? And I'm like, if you're asking me that, you're not made for this industry. Yeah. It's like you shouldn't be. You should <laughs> figure it out yourself, kind yeah. of thing. Um, it's so easy to get yeah. like a contact for someone, and then it just escalates and builds and builds and builds. If they're right? interested or if you have what they're looking for, if you have what it takes too. Yeah. And it's like that. coming from me, it's like I've been told no so many fucking times by studios. And really? it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All the before time. the fan content or uh, um well once I got my first gig, I was like, oh I'm in. It's gonna be easy now. And it's like people say no all the time. Mm -hmm. And now it's like they're all coming back and now they're like, oh okay, well we saw that, you know, blah blah blah. Yeah. Maybe we made a fit, mistake. <laughs> maybe we could fit you in here. So I guess it's like I'm like a testament to just fucking Yeah. Perseverance, perseverance, perseverance. Yeah, right. yeah. Don't take no. Don't uh, take and no. if you do take a couple of no's or twenty no's or thirty, eventually you'll get. I a mean, yes there's so many more other companies yeah. that you can work for nowadays, so. especially. I you also worked with. You've been doing. I don't know which one it is, and I'll cut it out for whichever one it is. You've been doing work with Say Uncle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it is Say Uncle. Uh, I've done a lot for Say Uncle. Okay, because yeah. there's there's Say Uncle and then there's I just recently found out there's Say Uncle and um, what's that? Uh, Carnal. Yeah, Carnal is um, I think one of the owners used to have Say Uncle. Yeah, that's why. I was, and then okay, he yeah. sold it or something. Like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Say Uncle, I've been doing a lot. Cause I, I watch them. I've seen them. They're uh, fun. Yeah, they're fun. They're yeah. so funny. Um, the guys that I work with. They're all guys I've already worked with a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. Like they're good pairings. Uh, I've did a lot, I did a lot in Montreal. I haven't done any recently. Uh, just super lighthearted, fun. The scripts are stupid. Yeah, yeah. So stupid. <laughs> but they're fun. Like if you want the car keys, suck my dick, kind yeah. of. But yeah, it was just fun. And uh, Sang is a really good company to work for. They're yeah, super nice guys. They keep in contact with you. That's they're always like, cool. Yeah. yeah, super respectful and like, yeah, they're a good company. Well, sure. they're out, they're based out of, or they were, um, they were Mormons, right? We right. Back, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, from what I, the whole story, I don't know the whole story, it's but they're based out of here though. They're based out of Brooklyn, right? If Brooklyn, I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Okay. Since you're in uh, Montreal, uh -huh. um, there are some porn stars there too. Yeah. Um, do you guys like, uh, is that like, sleep with all of them you sleep with all of them i love it wade and uh wait wade wolfgars no wade's in vancouver uh, okay no yeah. wade's in calgary okay so he's in calgary yeah. um i love wade manuel sky manuel sky manuel sky's manuel in montreal sky's there. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, a nice guy. who else i know there's there's definitely a couple of them trent Am trent I, king trent king he's from toronto okay he, so he's he travels yeah, between 
Okay. Uh, Pierre Fitch is in Montreal. Pierre Fitch, yes. Uh, oh, yeah, I think you've done a lot of stuff with him, right? Done tons yeah, of yeah, yeah, Pierre. Yeah. Um, there is um, Sky Knox. Yes. Love Sky Knox. Yeah, yeah. They're all super nice guys. Yeah. Um, great guys. I uh, I love Montreal. I have a, an affinity to it. I've been you there. You should. Oh, my God. I've, I've been there like four or five times at this point. Montreal's fucking amazing. Always had such a great time. It's like New York. Yeah. The first time first time we went, this is, I'll, I'll relate it to you because you can, because you're from there. Mm-hmm. Um, we actually were meeting uh, Manuel Sky. So here's right. here's the thing. I go there with my friends uh, on a vacation in 2014. Mm-hmm. And my one friend is a big Madonna fan. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. You know where this is. So Manuel is. Oh too. my God! Yeah. So he knew Manuel Sky, and I met Manuel Sky before Manuel Sky was Manuel Sky. Right. And we, he's like, oh, we'll meet at this bar called La Stud. So we go to La Stud. Oh yeah. And we hang out. We're at the bar section, and uh, it was our first night there. Um, met him. He was hardcore yogi, still is, but mm-hmm. you know that's yeah, totally. that's what he was doing. I think he was teaching at the time. Yeah. And. Um, uh, I, I met him as a Madonna fan as opposed to being a porn star. Cut to like two years later, he's like this, he's all over the place. And I was like, holy crap, I know that guy. Yeah. And, he, and I sent it to my friend. And he's like, oh, yeah, that's him. He's doing porn now, like full fledged yeah. porn star. He hasn't been doing it for that long either. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's he been. He started just a bit before me, actually. Um, The one thing, though, let's, we so we go to the study, um, Manuel leaves. I had no idea that. Um, La Stud was more than just a bar. At one point, one of my friends, like, we're hearing awesome music. Right. And the way it is, it's kind of separated in a way. Uh-huh. So my friend goes to the bathroom, and he comes back, and he's like, dude, there's a whole dance floor back there. Uh-huh. And we were like, what? We probably went, we were there for, like, five or for six three days. days. We went, like, four days straight. No joke. Right. How long has it been? I, since? I, I haven't been home since September. Okay. So it's going to be. Wow. It's going to be, like, seven months what's that like what's what's the like the idea of you're living out of a suitcase or i'm living out of a fucking suitcase yeah Yeah. but you're having a a great time i'm having a blast doing it um yeah it's been crazy sometimes i'm like oh god because i have a cat but i have a cat sitter that's moved in okay place so i'm pretty lucky um i like to shop so i'm sending shit back home constantly (laughs) because my suitcase is like (laughs) busting the limits constantly um yeah it's crazy so I've, I've, you know, I've dumbed everything down to like the basics. Um, can't travel with, with a, I can't travel with 40 million pairs of sneakers yeah. anymore, which is what I used to do. You know, when you're gone for a weekend, it doesn't matter when you're gone for like seven months and you keep buying shit. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. So it's been. What about um, like fan content? Let's talk a little bit about uh your fan sites for instance you're on only you're on only fans just for fans only fans uh just for fans raw fuck club many vids i have um that's it okay yeah. um oh i have xtube as well which is where okay. i started xtube premium or xtube i forgot what they XTube call it is where yeah, i started yeah, yeah. wow yeah xtube yeah crazy yeah it's still running it's still going it's still yeah working they kicked me off they kicked off all my podcasts and stuff apparently i also have to have uh ID, ID for all my guests. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's all right. Because I was I was trying to put the podcast everywhere that I could. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, so there's that. But what I wanted to talk to you about with, with your fan sites, mm-hmm. now that you've become a producer, technically, you're, yeah. you're a producer at this point. Right. With your own production company, which involves you in front of the camera. Right. Uh, you casting. Right. You doing, uh, I, I'm assuming you're doing your 2257 too, right? Because right. of this whole shit that happened with OnlyFans and right. all that stuff. Editing. Um, yeah, and editing. Right. What is What aspect of this entire production company that you are, do you like the most? And which one is your least favorite? Uh, I'd have to say the thing I like the most is being in front of the camera. For sure. That's mm-hmm. definitely like what I've always set out to do. Um, I also really like uh, like creating it. So the acting as a producer, I really like. Mm-hmm. Um, all the paperwork, models, it's a lot of work. Yeah. It's 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 a lot of um, maintenance, I mm-hmm. say. Um, but those are definitely, I mean, if I have a solid performer that I can work with, I'll usually do a few with them just because it's fun. It's easy. 
but some of these models are just really difficult. Yeah, some yeah. of them are, some of them just don't give a shit. Yeah. Some of them don't care. And it's like, I care so much about this that it's like, it's hard for me to do it with someone like that. Here's this guy that's asking you, you know, how do I become a porn star? Right. What would you say to people who want to start a fan site? You know, fi- like start their own page, like forget trying to get into porn via studios and stuff. Right. What is the most important thing for somebody who is just starting to do? Like what to recognize? It's not a get rich quick scheme type thing. It's not, you have to work at it. Mm-hmm. And you, I mean, you can't take these fans that are paying for morons don't feed them shit yeah because they find out really fast and they'll yeah. all unsubscribe you gotta respect people i mean they're paying money for your site mm-hmm. um so i've just always had the mission of this is what i do this is what you get if you sign up for it this is what you're going to keep getting mm-hmm. um kind of thing but these some of these models they're posting once a month they're charging super expensive yeah, yeah. They don't show cum shots. They're fake fucking four minute videos, four, four minute <laughs> videos. I'm just like, come on. Yeah. Like people aren't stupid. That's not fair to the guy that's paying for mm-hmm. your stuff or mm-hmm. the woman. Cause there's some women also that subscribe for, for membership sites and stuff there. Right. There's one update, one to two updates every, every week. Right. Um, you have to kind of be up to par with that at least, especially if you're charging nine ninety nine, which is right. what I usually see on fan sites and stuff. Yeah. And I've, I've just to like get, I kind of like sneak around there mm-hmm. just to see what's going on. Yeah. Who's and kind of talk to models. If, if it looks like they would be interested in crossing over and doing some studio stuff. Right. Um, but like you said, you sign up and almost immediately you realize, okay, well I'm going to get 30 second videos no cum shots. And you're just going to get bombarded with messages of them trying to sell you yeah. other shit. And so you're just like, what? What is the deal with that? That's that's newish, right? The idea that you can sell videos via messages and stuff. Right. So, which, which is yeah. fine. I mean, if that's your marketing strategy, that's fine. But it's just like a lot of these people don't know what they're getting into. So they're basically paying $10 a month for like previews and pictures yeah. that they didn't really want to see. Yeah. they don't, And they don't, you're right. They don't it's tell fine. you there's kind of no way of knowing until you've paid everything's the first blocked, month. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I just think that's just shady. Yeah. Shady. Business. Especially. And you know, sometimes I'll see like young guys, like 19, 20 year olds and stuff. And I'm like, Ooh, this person's like fresh. Let's see what they got to offer. Mm. Like, they don't really do anything. It's like a blurry ass pic. Yeah. And you see, like, half the shower, and you don't even see yeah. their face. Like, yeah, it's just, like, shit. Yeah. And, and I then just, I just kind of feel like these people are ruining for the ones that are working super hard at it. Yeah, but I also think that at some point they will eventually kind of be weeded out. Oh, they get weeded out within yeah. a month because they realize they're not making, they want to buy a house, mm-hmm. you know, within a month. Mm-hmm. And it's work. And it's work. You are absolutely doing a lot of work. Um, Working our asses off. Yeah. This. And it's yeah. like people just think it's like I get messages. Oh, you know, it's easy for you because you're established. And I was like, I wasn't established yeah. last year. Yeah. I've just been working my fucking ass off. You know, you have a goal and you set it and you yeah. work for it. Like, that's how it goes. What's been like the kinkiest and the fetishiest? And where do you feel more at home? Like what? Um, Give me like an overall perspective, let's say, of, of, of studio work that you've done. I've done everything yeah. from um, Raging Stallion to Pig Boy Ruben. Oh, yeah. I've okay. done yeah. all of them. Um, there's always, there's, I mean, there's some studios that I'm not really interested in working for. Um, if they're too polished, mm. too, I mean, I'm kind of trashy, right? Let's put that out there. I'm a little sleazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I'm lucky. I can pick and choose. I like gang bangs. I like, you know, cummy holes i like gaping asses i love all that stuff so it's like i'm usually gonna get booked for that stuff yeah. anyways so those that's where i feel more comfortable for sure yeah um i feel you but yeah I, like if you give me i don't know like now that i'm saying they would ever hire me but like a bellamy scene it's like i don't know i was like <laughs> I don't know. I, like, think, I think once you reach 23, it's like the cutoff. <laughs> right. But it's wise. like a, a polished, <laughs> yeah, crisp, yeah. like clean looking studio. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, I'm really too fucking old for that too. But yeah, anyways. Uh, yeah. I, I, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like there's certain studios that I know I could work for and, and 
they're always the one that works for me the best. I love Treasure Island. Treasure Island. <laughs> Treasure Island's great. Yeah. So I uh, this is going to be my second year with Treasure Island. Right. Tre- second year with Treasure Island. Uh, Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah. They're they're a fun company. They're a very, very fun company. Yeah, they they came at a very good time. Um, mm-hmm. And also... Um, not I'm not shamelessly plugging or anything because this is independent of of Treasure Island. This is my own thing. That's nothing to do with that. Yeah, no. Um, that's why I'm, I'm. It's it's the best part about it is that I'm able to talk to models from anywhere and studio heads from anywhere. So that's always right. fun. But um, for everything, and I'm sure Max will hate me saying this, but for everything that everybody pictures treasure island to be the back of the the house right is very well kept <laughs> right and by that i mean like everybody's respectful oh yeah um, we get bonuses for christmas we get like it's th- little things like that mean a lot i'm like oh my god thank you very Does much it give you a michael kors bag not a michael kors bag <laughs> however we do get um we got we, we got like pandemic swag at one point in Ooh. the beginning because if we were going to be i don't i don't even think we were shooting at the time but they ordered this stuff, and I think they may have been selling it online on the... Like masks. They things. had masks. I'll yeah. show you. I think... Do I still have it? But masks, and then they had um, uh, hand sanitizer. Right. But they had to put on the back of it, not lube, just in case... Not somebody, poppers. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can't sniff this, and you can't put it on your right. dick. But, um, yeah, for, for everything that they are, like this dirty, cummy, you know, like sleazy company, right. they're so fucking nice so fucking nice yeah they uh they also have uh and i found this when i came to them uh a reputation because of that movie slammed Mm -hmm. right so that movie for for what it's worth you know that person that directed that no longer with the company but Mm -hmm. not amicable it's not anything bad or anything but when i was trying to get models to come here from from the past studio Mm -hmm. they were like "Eh, i I don't really want to work with them because of this because of that right I, i was able to keep generally what is my style of shooting like basically come in come out we get everything that we need i edit it and we put it up it looks great right um i was able to keep that right so it was very very hard to talk to people uh, and let them know hey it's me but just a different company right um that was a one-time deal though the what the that one movie was oh yeah one shot. yeah but then you know it doesn't really help not perpetuate the idea that everybody in porn i'm sure you get this right do you like does anybody ever say oh well, you're probably high on something or blah 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 everybody's um on drugs and that's that's the kind right. of like it's sad. the myth almost it's sad. that everybody sees it and they think that everybody's high on set and all that stuff mm-hmm. and couldn't be any any less true because we don't because really i don't that. even drink yeah you know I, I don't drink i no? don't do drugs I just don't. Yeah, my, my I I love alcohol. I'm not gonna lie. Not love like I can't function or anything right. like that. But you know, a drink here and there. No, but I yeah, can't. Okay. I just can't. Well, I mean, it. it I keeps travel you too much. Headed. Yeah, I travel okay. too much. So it's like to sustain an addiction would just be insane. Yeah, traveling with it just wouldn't work. So I'd end up just staying at home if I had an addiction and not doing anything for fear of traveling and running out of drugs or oh okay i see what you're saying but like drink wise you've never touched the sauce i've already drank oh yeah i've already drank okay Um, so you've it's never been an issue for Mm -hmm. me but i just rather eat pizza and i'd rather have carbs that way yeah i'd rather have cake (laughs) okay yeah it's just it's good it's just alcohol it's not my thing really yeah okay um i'm fucking boring there's not okay so (laughs) now that you say that so um when you say boring what do you mean you mean like hanging out at the house and just no because no yeah no i'm fine yeah i mean (laughs) but people i think when you say oh you don't drink they're like oh and then you're like oh i don't i don't pee and pee and they're like (laughs) you know what i mean and i'm just like i swear i'm fun like anyways i can i got a big dick i'll fuck you like you know what i mean yeah what's one thing that people wouldn't know you for or like do you have a hobby or anything like that that people would be like wow i never thought he would be a stamp collector or (laughs) something like that do you have anything that you enjoy doing um when you're not doing porn or having sex like that you love i um collection wise so here's the deal i actually have an elvira collection really right get out of here yeah it's insane 
Cassandra Peterson. <laughs> she's, yes. I met her once in 2004. At I a met restaurant. her three times. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. She's a sweetheart. She's cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah she's yeah. a nice lady. Yeah. Red hair, right? Right. <laughs> when she doesn't have her wig on. Yeah. 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 No, she's. So she's, I have, I think, probably one of the biggest collections in like North America. Really? Yeah. There's, so you've, you, when you met her, have you told her this? Oh, yeah. She's yeah? signed tons of stuff oh. for me. Yeah. I have like a really crazy collection. I've been collecting her stuff for like maybe five years now. Wow. And wherever I go in the US, I've always picked up stuff, ship it back home because I have no more room in my fucking suitcases. <laughs> Yeah, I have huge, like, all, I have, like, the big box VHS from the 80s. Which one, Mistress of the Dark? No, I, no, like, the, because she used to host a TV show oh, back okay. in the 80s. So I have all those originals yeah. on VHS. Yeah, they're fucking insane. Wow. I have all of them. Yeah. Okay. Where did this come from? Where? I don't know. <laughs> you just one day said, you know what? I, just one day, I was like, oh, because I, I think people who collect are fucking awesome. I think people who have collections are really cool. And I was like, one day I was reading on her and how she has all these, all these, she's been branded so many times and she's had so many, she's had beers and she's had wine and she's had, she's had everything. <laughs> and I was like, that's one collection I'll never get to the end of collecting because she has so much stuff. Yeah. So I was like, that'll be a challenge to start okay. collecting it. Yeah. So that's how I got into it. What's the weirdest thing in your collection? Your Elvira collection? I have, it's not weird, but, like, I have, like, old, like, uh, the tin signs from, like, when your beer came out. Okay. I have all that stuff. I have candles. I have the wine that came out a few years ago. Um, but, like, weird stuff, I don't think I have any, like, pieces of her dress or anything or, like, locks of lock her hair. Of her. <laughs> lock of her hair cut off at the meet and greet. I, like, came up behind her and cut her hair. No, I don't have that. I'm not psycho like that. But Where, uh, how far... Where was the furthest you've ever collected something that was like memorabilia from her? Uh, California. Okay. For sure. All right. Yeah. So w have you seen anything outside of the States when it comes Not to Not really. No? I've been looking every time I go to Europe to see if I can find like that German version yeah. of the DVD, but I never can find it. Um, but it's more the US that she's looking yeah. for. Yeah. Yeah. Good. That's awesome, man. It's I would super fun. I would have never guessed. It's a good collection. <laughs> and I have. love, I love Elvira I'll as send, well. I'll send you pictures of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love to crazy. see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's, uh, let's explore kinks and fetishes with you. Uh, is there a, do you have any? Uh, fetishes? I'm really into sneakers. Really? Yeah. So you've got, you've got a sneaker fetish. Okay. That's my thing. Okay. Yeah. My, my boyfriend does as well. Uh, and do you, do you have some that never leave the house? Yes. Because they're used for, <laughs> for the they're house. Used for like, they can't really touch the ground, so they have to be in the bed. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. Damn. Where did that come from? I don't know. No? It's just, I've just, I like collecting sneakers too. Mm -hmm. It's one of my things. Um, so when you say fetish, do you like fucking bottoms that are wearing a uh, specific sneaker? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just uh, like socks and sneakers or, or socks and sneakers? Okay. Yeah. Hi. Definitely. Damn. People are like, I want you in a jock. So I was like, I don't fucking care. I was like, wear sneakers and a pair of socks, baseball caps backwards into it. Really? Gym. Yeah. Okay. So athleisure almost. Right. You like that look? Like that. just got out of the gym and. Right. Okay. Wow. That's All my right. Thing. Fuck. I don't know if he's wearing uh, sneakers today. He fucking better. He may. Let's see. He comes in with high heels on. No, no. He definitely <laughs> will come in with. <laughs> Stilettos. No, fuck. No, yeah. Um, so you're uh so you're a sneakerhead. Right. You love that. Um I love sneakers. There there was a time when I was flirting with uh, uh kicks and dicks, like a almost like a website or right. a series based on that because it is, it's very hot. It's super hot. Yeah. That uh what about piss? I've been peed on mm -hmm. um a bunch of times. Usually if I'm fucking the bottom really hard and he's riding me, sometimes he pees. I mean, Drew. I was going to say, is it Drew? <laughs> one of them was Drew, yeah. Um, I can pee on people. Yeah. It's not really one of the most requested things for me, um, to be honest. People just want to see me just railing a hole usually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, pee I can do. I'm into pee. Um, armpits. Uh, I'm trying to think of. I mean, is armpit a fetish? Yeah, there's, there's really? people out there that love armpits, yeah. Oh, no, I fucking love armpits, but yeah. I didn't think it was a fetish because oh, it's just like a reflex to just put your face in there. Maybe it's not, uh, I don't know. I don't know a lot of people that are just like, that's what I'm going to go for first. But I do know that I feel there's like it's definitely, just normal. like people are just, 
you know, they'll show you their armpits and their hair mm. and stuff. Very hot. Mm. Very, very Love hot. It. Yeah. So hot. There's that. There's, you know, the mouths, belly button, um, hands. Hands are really fucking big, too. Really? Yeah. Hands? Yeah. What yeah. You fuck your hands? Well, not fuck hands, but just like people love looking at hands or grabbing something, maybe grabbing a dick. Maybe. I, I, if I'm going to be 100% honest, I'll pick a pair of hands over a pair of feet any day. Yeah? Okay, oh, so yeah. you don't you don't have a foot fetish. Wow, that's interesting. So you like sneakers, but you don't like feet. Maybe because the sneakers cover the feet because ah, I don't like feet. Okay. When was the first time you were like, oh, fuck, that's really hot, like when it came to sneakers? Ever since I can remember. Yeah? Yeah. Like vintage, like when people were in like track suits and stuff and sneakers. I just always thought it was a super good look. And School and hot. stuff. Super hot. Gym sneakers. Okay. Super hot. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. That's hot. Yeah. I've That's crazy. Yeah. 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 So now it's just translated to me having like 350 pairs of sneakers at home Jesus. all piled up in boxes. Yeah. It's just weird. <laughs> Which you'll never get through all of them, but you know that they're there. You like them. And the worst yeah. part is I always have these ones on my fucking feet. I always have the same pair on. <laughs> Those are nice. Right. Those are very, very nice. nice. Uh, like I said, you know, my, my boyfriend has a sneaker fetish as well. And um, thank God for Nike supporting um, Colin Kaepernick when he did the knee. I was not, I, I, I'm not very flashy when it comes to brands and stuff, but again, kind of like when you're in a relationship, mm -hmm. you kind of, you want to do stuff that's going to make him, get, get uh, him going. Yeah. So I'll send you a picture of the sneakers that I have. Please do. <laughs> yeah. Like my, my side was literally a pair of sneakers that I, I have a pair that I use for running. Right. A pair that I use for every day, which is these, cause I kind of like scuff them up and stuff. Right. But then I also have now a going out pair of sneakers. And a pair of sneakers for uh, running, waiting. But I had to buy them because they were beautiful, and I didn't want them to go like to, there you go, you know, like go out of uh, right, not print, but you know what I mean, like out of stock. Yeah, um, you're stocking up on sneakers. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's cool. crazy. I am gonna have him show you some pictures too. Please do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Shoot. All right. Well, that's very interesting. We should keep those on then. Is that cool? You want to I was with planning on keeping them. Oh, off. Awesome. I was taking them okay, off. good, good, good. All right, so you're fucking Alessio Vega today. Yes. You um you kind of came and requested that too. Yeah. All right, so what it, what is it about Alessio Vega that makes you want to fuck him? Uh we've just been talking for two years. He just looks like he just really wants to get fucked. Oh yeah. He's good too. So yeah, even like on the way over here I sent me a message. I was like, oh she's such a dirty slut. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah, he says, I'm really excited about this. He sent me a text right. message. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to it too. Um He sent me I, I think he was like, My pussy is so hungry for you right now. And I was like, Oh god, I'm gonna just fucking jizz in my pants. Yeah. Stop. Like yeah, I'm no, so I, excited. I'm I, I'm I can't wait. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's gonna be so very, excited. very fun. Before before everything, I would like to know, um, listeners right listeners that are, mm -hmm. are not necessarily uh porn connoisseurs or gay porn right. consumers and stuff where would they go if they want to find you okay you can find me twitter it's it's all the same name so instagram twitter is at romeo davis xl and if you want to find me there's actually a, um, a link tree on all of it okay so you can find i'm also a brand ambassador for addicted and okay. masculo so all those codes are on there if you want to get some merchandise through them um just for fans only fans rock Fuck club everything's linked on that so okay that's the best way to do sweet it. um i have to thank you very much for doing this i absolutely appreciate it I thank know you that. so much yeah people will enjoy it this is fun yeah yeah yeah, yeah. now have, have me over more often we will you know what next season um for season three what i plan on doing is getting a little more interactive with models in the sense of um like drew for instance he says he can't cook so don't fucking make him cook. so i told him why don't we do he's like i would love to be on that show um nailed it so i said to him next season uh, let's do something where we can have a conversation but you can also try to make something right so while we're talking um have somebody like a camera guy actually holding a camera you know boom mic and all that fun stuff so i want to get a little more interactive champ robinson wants to dress and drag i'll go out and drag with him why not so like that's the kind of season that i want to have he drew should just stick the bottom <laughs> <laughs> but you know we have a good amount of time to decide 
what your episode would look like if you'd love to join us again because oh, I'd love to have you. I want to do it, but I don't know. Let me think about it. Yeah, we can go I'm sneaker good. shopping. We can do whatever oh, you want to do. Yeah, that'll be really, really cool. Bring me to like those dirty sex shops. Okay. I fucking love shopping. For okay. Me, like bondage wear and stuff. It's so fun. All right, that'll be fun. I'd have to get permission from the store, but I'm sure, you know, ahead of time, yeah, that'll we'll be do cool that. with it. All right, sweet. Good. All right, let's get down to uh, fucking Alessio Vega. Oh, please. <laughs> this right. has been like foreplay for it. Yeah, oh, there there he is. All right. Just on time. All awesome. right. Sweet. Um, guys, th thank you very much for listening. My guest was Romeo Davis. Uh, you know where to find him. Uh, you know where to find us. The Mystifying Gay Porn on every single podcast directory on YouTube. Click the like button. Click the subscribe button. Click the notifications. All that fun stuff. And my name is IK Grande. I've been your host. And if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped you get off. <laughs> Cheers.